Hi everybody! I'm doing a chakra body transformation session today and I'm gonna go ahead and read the goals here which are awesome and then I'm gonna be getting connected to the client and we'll see where spirit takes us. Okay, are you ready for this? <laughs> All right, so my goals for this chakra body transformation session, these are the client goals, are to cleanse, reorganize, and generally upgrade my chakra system so that I can feel optimal function, physical vitality, and stamina. Since acquiring a terrible C. diff infection due to antibiotic treatment after a surgical procedure 10 years ago, I have had full-blown fibromyalgia and have lived with daily pain, stiffness, digestive issues, trouble sleeping, restless legs, and weight gain. My nervous system is super sensitive, and in short, so many of my physical systems are out of whack that a comprehensive reorganization and balancing of the energetic body are needed for me to feel comfortable in my physical body. So many people live with chronic pain that I would like to offer this session on YouTube with the hope that it will be helpful to those in similar conditions. I had a soul rebirth journey session, and it was tremendously profound and amazing. I feel a great shift in the way that spirit can express through my physical body, and I think a follow-up assist to bring balance to the chakra system would be very helpful. Oh, cool. <laughs> All right. This is going to be so wonderful. Thank you so much for sharing literally everything. And I think this session is, is going to help people too. All right, I'm going to get connected to your energy field now. We're going we're gonna to seriously tackle this stuff. We're going to wipe this stuff off your plate. We're going to help you feel awesome today. Spirit and I, we're going to work together. <laughs> we're going to change your life today. Okay. Right now, I feel kind of drifty and weightless. I feel just drifting, like I'm a cell in the blood and I'm just sort of drifting. And I don't have a thought in my mind. I'm cool with it. I'm just going with it. It's not necessarily like I'm in a river or a lake I, or, you know, going downstream. I really do feel like I'm a cell in the blood and I'm just literally drifting right now. I'm going to go with it. I feel carefree. I feel fearless, but not necessarily fearless because I don't experience fear actually existing in this state of being. So I don't have a relationship with fear at all. I just feel peaceful. I feel as though this is correct. This is what life is. This is what creative experience my soul is, is having. And it's not without, I mean, it's not like itself is thinking about its life. It's just living without thinking about living, but experiencing the peacefulness and the simplicity. And there literally is nothing else. There's nothing else. It's amazing to feel this way. I'm feeling this way in your energy field. And it's just like I'm a single cell in your blood right now. So peaceful. There's a big energy shift going on here. I'm transitioning to new information. And I will say there's an energy movement around my head, the back of my head. And there's a jar here in my throat. If I were to describe this scene, it's very strange looking. Um, it looks like, a, cor like a, a sponge, but it's like a coral because it looks hard. Um, and it has kind of the effect of like something underwater because it has little, little holes in it. It's kind of a, I don't know, brownish color. And this, I see this uh, right straight through here, through the throat. So I'm just looking at this right now. It's very strange to look at it. Okay, there's a lot of other things I'm picking up on, but I'm, I'm not sure how to put my finger on it all just yet. Hmm. 
I feel like I'm looking at a version of you, but um, somehow um, there's an echo. So, so you've created echo, an echo of yourself. So let's say, let's say um, you're one soul. But what if you had a trail of echoed soul versions of you, just sort of like kind of there, but not like you're not all working together as one. There's just kind of an echo of you. Um, I feel like I'm looking at just a version of you, but there's other versions of you here. And they almost feel like trailed echoes. So so that's kind of what I'm picking up on. But let's let's just one thing at a time here. Oh, yeah, I, I just I just touch you gently right here. And I tell you that you're going to be feeling great here and everything is going to be okay. And as I touch this part of you right here, I literally am touching all of the echoes at the same time. And I'm telling them that they're going to feel great and everything is going to be okay. Because when we say everything's going to be okay to each other, we're giving each other permission to feel safe. And when we feel safe, I mean, there's something absolutely beautiful about that energy of, of feeling safe. And we let go of fear, which can trap us, you know. And for some reason, I'm just giving you permission to feel safe. And in feeling safe, you can know literally everything in your life is going to be okay. As I'm doing this, there's a weird electrical sort of like a lightning bolt come down and zap my finger and try to kind of pull me away from what I'm sharing with you. And I feel like somehow whatever the zap is about is the same zap that created all of these echoing parts of you. So it's not allowing you to just be fully you. It's like it's almost like creating duplicates. Um so when I send this energy into you and the zap hits my hand, it's like it's trying to zap me and zap you at the same time, like get away from, from her and then to, to cut you into yet another duplicate. Hmm. Hmm. I'm just sending energy down here into the floor and the floor is literally rattling beneath us. Um, let me just continue to focus here. And I'm surrounding all your duplicates, all your echoes, um, in an orb of love and security and safety, okay? We don't need zapping energies. We don't need duplicates. We just need to feel in the oneness. And we can send love to that zap and just say, thank you so much for all you shared with my life. But my learning is changing and I want to work with myself and I want to put all myself back together again and because I'm ready now I no longer need your help and so I want to thank you for all that you've taught me in my life so strange things are happening here um, this orb, I'm kind of, I'm inside of it, but I'm looking also from the outside in and there's strange, it's almost like a weird green gas is like developing on the inside and there's weird sort of uh, circular bumps and um, spots, uh, like a weird infection or something is developing. Um, it's very strange. So I need to figure out what this is. Hmm. I, for some reason, um, right now, I'm not meant to poke a hole in the sphere. And we need to just keep allowing whatever is releasing. It's it's like acting like it, it needs to, uh, we need a window in here. It needs to breeze out. But my spirit guides are saying, no, right now we need to just let this uh, react how it needs to react. And then we'll see the next thing, okay? So I'm just letting it react. You ever have uh, have news hit you, and the news what wasn't what you wanted to hear, but for some reason, like let's say you really don't enjoy your job, but you keep going to work every single day, and you do your job, and it's your job, and it's fine, you know. And then one day you're fired, and you're pissed, and you can't let go of it. But yet it was the one thing you always wanted to be fired because you really didn't like your job anyway. 
So it was like a blessing, but why am I so pissed about it? <laughs> so here I am, I'm keeping you safe from the zap. And uh, and now it's almost like you're venting out disappointment or, or upset. Um, but this was yet the one thing that you needed most. But let's just keep watching here. It's interesting because you're wanting me to do chakra body transformation. I'm literally working with a lot more than just your throat and your mental body, okay? This is literally like a full-fledged soul thing. This is like all of you right now. You're slowly adjusting and realizing that change is a good thing and it's something that you need. It's, it's strange because life uh, encourages, to, encourages us to get into a pattern. And even if that pattern is doing nothing to benefit us, we adjust to it so it's normal. And so it's hard to change a normal pattern because we're used to it. And we don't like change because change then uh, disrupts the norm. Um, and so it can be vulnerable, right? Um, and something about this change... You're adapting and adjusting to it, and all this green gassy vapor is just diminishing and it's starting to turn into a, a warm, um, like beautiful, like misting um, rain. It's like super crystal clear droplets of misting water. And it's lovely to actually inhale it as well. Um, I feel like I'm inhaling it. Uh, I'm I'm rejuvenating from it. I'm revitalizing. I feel clean. It's, it feels like it's cleaning my body. There's lots of little droplets of water um, and it's all over me and it just feels really great and fresh. It's like Hawaii is developing in here. It's sort of like I'm in Hawaii or something. But there's still a vulnerability and a question mark um, because all the duplicates haven't come back into you yet. Um, but you're safe in the orb here. Um, there's something, though, there's something kind of, uh, um, something we still have to find out about. I can feel that. that. So. Okay. So I'm just uh, allowing energy to continue to flow here. And I'm exploring this orb that you're in. And it wants to show me that the orb is dissolved. And once it fully dissolves and I just see you, I still feel all the duplicates there, although I can't see them. Um, as I see you, you're kind of drenched in a sappy, goopy, clear liquid. And I'm just going to go with this for right now. <sighs> So two things are, are happening at the same time. One is the orb has dissolved with you and this clear sappy goop on you. And the other is the orb has not dissolved. And I haven't decided which version I, I feel most comfortable with. Um, so I'm kind of energetically um, feeling out both frequencies to see which which way I want to go next. But I almost also feel like letting this be what it is and then just go deeper into your energy field, okay? Okay, I made up my mind. <laughs> so we're going to work with the orb is not there. And you're covered in this clear, goopy stuff. And when I go to give you a hug, um, it's like it wants to, me to stick to you. Um, but it also is almost like a lotion. Like it doesn't have to be sticky either. It really doesn't know what it is. It doesn't know how it wants to react, if it wants to be disagreeable or agreeable. Um, but it doesn't want to disappear because it needs to exist, right? And so it's having all these thoughts um, that are echoing to me about its own existence. The clear goopy stuff. Um, and I'm trying to decide what is the next step for you. You see how you have energy junk um, going on here? But you've got a big deal thing going on. So it's no wonder I got all these avenues to take. So I'm just going to go straight into your heart and I'm going to ignore the goop. Okay, when I go into here starts to shake a little bit and there's some exhaustion 
there's a, a big old black kind of spike, but I'm in your heart portal, which is a tunnel. It's dark, um, but it's full of love. And then the spike is coming towards me as I'm going into this heart portal of yours. And I say, nope. And I just push the spike out. It's enormous, so it would take quite a giant or a mighty man or a mighty mouse to move it. Um, but I can just do that, so I just move it out of the way. It wants to be bigger and uh, threatening and say that it's stuck and it's going to be here, but um, it's just an illusion. It's all an illusion. So I go through it, I d just force it out of the way, and I just come through, and I say there's no more hurt anymore. So we don't need the spikes, we don't need the confusing goops, we don't need the the acidic, weird, greenish uh, 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 fog, we don't need any of that, the infection, we don't need any of that stuff. We don't need the zapping, because we don't need that either. Because um, we're not choosing pain and suffering anymore. So we don't need the the actual textbook that then manifests into our reality. So we're done. We've graduated and now we're ready for new learning. So we don't need all this other stuff. Hmm. All right. This is the next uh, extreme thing. There's, um oh man, like uh, three versions of you in here. And there's uh, like uh, um, caviar looking black orbs, but they're larger than that, but they have kind of a gloss to them. They kind of make me think of caviar for some reason. They're black and they're making up three throne chairs in this very dark place. And the spike is just thrown out of the way. It's like over there against the wall. What does this place look like? It looks like the inside of a body, but it's just totally open air. Um, but it looks like the inside of a heart. This is literally what it looks like. It's like a chamber inside the heart. And you can't decide which one will speak. Um, so you're actually talking to your other, like all three of you are talking to each other about who will speak. Um, so now uh, the echoing thing again. So we need to just merge you with all your different selves so you can just be whole, right? So you can just be you and then present yourself as you and uh, and then be awesome, you know, because you don't need all this other stuff. <sighs> okay, so... So as these three are trying to make up their mind, something happens and there's a big barrier that uh, sort of comes down and is sort of blocking me from accessing these three parts of you. Mm. And I just see that whatever this block is, um, is Archangel Metatron. Because anything that is negative, we can transform it into a positive anytime we want. So anytime you experience a negative, it's Archangel Met Metatron. Um, I don't know what you're talking about. That card just cut me off. That's Archangel Metatron. It's a great day. You know, I, I just got fired from my job. That's Archangel Metatron. It's the best thing that ever happened to you. You know, I got fibromyalgia. That's Archangel Metatron. There really isn't any fibromyalgia. There's just the idea that it exists. And then the reality that create that we live in, you know, so we can alter our ideas our belief systems, and we can completely alter our energy fields and our programming and all that stuff. And we can totally let it go and totally transform ourselves and our programming because love is the only thing that's real. And it's all Archangel Metatron, right? So you can use this. All right, so um, I see this block is Archangel Metatron, so there really isn't any block here. And I say, Archangel Metatron, what do you know about these three? And what do you know about all these duplicates? Because that's a really big thing going on here with this client. I've got to get all these parts back together. And all this uh, calamity stuff doesn't actually exist. Seems to exist, but it really doesn't. So we just need to get rid of all that, bring you back in togetherness, and get you feeling balanced. Hmm. Archangel Metatron takes me to the center version of you. And I look into her eyes and she she looks like the Queen of England. <laughs> she does. Um, and I look into her eyes and I'm not putting up with um, 
any of this BS. It, it, that's literally how it comes through. I'm not going to put up with these other two because you're going to just talk to me. It's you. You're the one. You're the one. I'm going to look at you and I'm going to define you as the one. So all these other parts of you, um, we're going to just focus on the one part of you and this is you. That just, that means everybody else now is a part of you. I'm looking at her and um, she's kind of confused or startled. She's trying to decide what she's going to say. Um, her heart feels a bit like it's moving back and forth, not like it's beating. It's just like a, it's not necessarily vulnerable, but it's shaking a little bit. And I say, what do you want? What do you want? I start to see that she's attached to this throne. And the other parts are like a weird streamed out um, duplicates. And uh, they don't they don't look healthy at all. And there's like veins that are connecting this version of you um, with these duplicates that actually look like blood vessels, I guess you could say. Um, and then there's a sort of roped like uh, veins connecting. Um, it's very weird. You've been through a lot, so none of this stuff surprises me at all. I s oh. Just a moment here. She still is not sure what to say, but she is coming into a different form of awareness. And I'm asking her to just focus on breathing right now. Just focus on breathing right now. And there's something about being attached to the, I mean, these are reflections of the body. Um, they don't look healthy. So having attachments to unhealthy parts of you is uh, the best way I could define this right now. And you don't need to have attachments to the unhealthy parts of you because really they just need to be reconciled and let go. It's all energy in the end. So it can be transformed and be put to something new, you know? It's like recyclables that get turned into new paper and things like that. We can transform energy into new stuff too. We can transform the blo energy block to Archangel Metatron. We could literally do anything we want. You acknowledge that uh, this conversation, but you tell me you're just not sure because they're actually a part of you. That's how you feel about this. These uh, um, hurt parts of you, um, they're actually part of you, so you can't uh, let them go. It would just be like me removing your leg. I can't remove your leg, you know, that wouldn't be right. Um, so you're kind of saying it like this. And I tell you that um, that isn't actually you speaking. That's the excuses speaking. That's ego speaking. So ego, you'll always know when ego is speaking because it creates excuses. Um, truly, we can be yes people. <laughs> you know, we can really be positive and say, sure, I'll give it a try. I'll give it my best shot. Um, so I tell her, you know what we can do? Um, let's go ahead, if you feel safe, um, and you want to say you you can't do it, why not say you don't know how to? Um, if that is possible, um, I'm open-minded to it right now. I just simply don't see how that's possible, but I'm going to be open-minded to it. So now we open a doorway to possibilities. When we say, I can't, then the doorway now is closed and there's literally nothing anybody can do for you, you know? So we got to say, I don't know how that's possible, but if you if you think so, you know, I, I'll be open to it. I'll be open to any possibilities, sure. So now the angels can come in and now the love can come in and give you lots of opportunities. Things that you never thought of. So we start to, because this is an open door that's manifesting here within the heart of you, the head, the, the queen of England, you know, the ruler of you, <laughs> I guess you could say, um, I start to see that love energy is, goes through your heart and then it goes through these veins into the other two versions who are now pushing back. 
So you are in front and then they're behind you, side by side behind you. Um, they're starting to look healthy. They're actually starting to look like two different, I mean, everything looks like a different woman. There's three women here. And there's Queen of England, and then there's this woman who looks absolutely nothing like this woman or the Queen of England. They all look different. Um, and the two women in the back are starting to look more and more like actual people, not just sort of globs covered in these balls, caviar balls with weird veins. They actually look like uh, beautiful women. There's something important about this because beautiful women have many roles, you know, so... Um, some beautiful women are amazing leaders and, uh, you know, some beautiful women are um, really uh, emanate the, that soft feminine energy that uh, warms our hearts. Some beautiful women are amazing mothers and nurturers. Some beautiful women, you know, there's literally so many different types of beautiful women, you know. And these three are all reflections of you and they're all three very beautiful women very unique beautiful women and they aren't hurt parts of you they're healthy parts of you they're all healthy parts of you so now it makes sense why she says i can't they're part of me um that would be like cutting my leg off so really what we needed to transform was the idea or the program that i can't um, just becomes an open doorway to discovery um, so now we discover that there's no hurt here. We just really need to bring forward the healing, the healthy, the true, the true um, essence. Now I start to see the two from the back come forward. So there's three specific uh, women here. And now they're starting to work together. This woman over here, um, so if I were to turn around, she'd be... Um, right side but she's on my like I'm looking at her so I see her on my left side but then so she'd be on the right of you and she's wearing like a pinkish purple dress she's super dark um brown hair it's kind of parted along the side and then she looks like a girl like a, a high school girl ready for prom um but she looks slightly older than that um like maybe a miss america pageant girl um she looks like she's in her 20s she has a very gorgeous she's a kind of exotic looking um she looks um like um i don't know like she's from brazil or something of that nature and she's, she's very pretty and she just smiles and she has really beautiful brown eyes for some reason when i look at her and i feel her look at me she just smiles and i just feel that she is healing energy and that's a sh it, i don't even need her to say anything to me I just experience her as healing me. Healing me, actually. She just emits healing energy. That's all I know. That's like what she does. I can't stop looking at her. It's not because she's beautiful. It's because the stunning, beautiful healing energy that she emits. It just comes so natural. And it's attractive. Um, I want more of this healing. And this is a part of you. This is coming from within you. So this Queen of England is a little too bossy. Um, that's um, what it feels like. And she says that she's just simply not sure how to be in balance with the other ones. So she just always takes charge. Um, and she did feel slightly better when she put the other two behind her. So she could just be the one, the only one. Kind of reminds me of Ego because Ego just wants to be the only one, you know. Mm. I tell her it's okay, you know. That's what getting out of balance is all about, is where we have um, our feelings uh, take over, you know. We get, become way too emotional, or um, we are overthinking things, so our mind takes over, or, you know. So there, there can be parts of us that get too loud, and they overshadow the other parts. So um, that's what happens when we get out of balance, you know. That's, that's pretty normal. So I tell her, you know, that that happens. <laughs> And I'm really glad that she's open to acknowledging it, that she's open and willing to acknowledge it and to, to take a look at the other parts that are um, their own unique identities. And it wouldn't be healthy for them to actually be you, but they're all a part of each other and they're all a part of you. 
as well. You, the client. Hmm. I cannot see this one on the side. She's sort of like a, like I can, like I can see her chair, but um, everything, it's almost like a, on a piece of paper, like newspaper, and then it just ripped out her face and body. So I just see her chair, but she's not there. She's just like, like a milky white, um, like smudge. <laughs> so I have no idea what she's all about. See, uh, this is still not quite balanced, okay? Things are reconciling. It's looking a lot better. It's feeling better in here. But there's still something not, not right. So um, one idea I had was to take this healing and one and mm, mm, Queen of England and then to bring them to look at this one that has no identity. She's a question mark. She's a mystery. But I could tell it's a she. And when I have them come towards her, I notice there's hoses connected to each one of them on the lower back. There's a hose. So the healing one is a green hose and the Queen of England has a red hose. And I feel like this mystery one has a dark, dark blue hose. But they're all connected. And this is all in the heart. Okay, I'm just gonna have to, um, I'm gonna have to throw an idea out there in order to get things moving. I'm gonna say that she's, she's a very old woman, um, like a hundred years old. And she's been waiting patiently for somebody to notice and for somebody to care about her existence. But she's so sweet and so patient that she won't ever say a word. She'll never stand up for herself. She'll never get bossy. She'll never tell the other ones, hello, what about me? Because that's not in her nature. So she's just been waiting for somebody to notice and for somebody to care. Thing is, is she holds a lot of the marbles here. <laughs> like she's, um, she's very special. She's very, 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 very special and almost, um, more special. <laughs> I don't like to say more special because it's not really true. Nobody's more special than anybody else, but there's something special about her and the mystery of her. And as that mystery comes to light, um, she's sort of becoming in the spotlight, you know? So. Um, problem is something weird is happening. And uh, her chair is starting to get like a rock growing over it. Um, it's an orangish colored rock growing over it. And it's trying to hide her. But she just waits patiently. She shows me she can be any age. And she can be very childlike. I see a child that um, has a white, a very cute, very simple little white dress. And she's sort of skipping um, through the grass. She has pigtails. Um, and just sort of like a, it's blonde hair, but it's a little bit brown. Um, she's super adorable. She's just skipping through the grasses. And there's something simple and sweet and beautiful and innocent about this image. And she says she's also very young, too. She can be any age. I tell her no amount of rock is ever going to hide you from me because I can see you right through it and I can see you. She says that she knows, um, but it's just her waiting for the other two to allow themselves to also see her. It's not as if they don't see her. They just refuse to acknowledge her value, the value of her. Hmm. I say, well, do you acknowledge the value of you? Because you could wait for an eternity, but if you don't acknowledge the value of you and give people a chance to... I mean, sometimes we can't always put all the responsibility on others. If we become the sweet, quiet one in the corner um, and we don't step out there... Um, why would the universe, um, maybe the challenge is to step out, you know? Um, there's something lovely about that identity and that a presence. Um, but there's also something about, um, 
going outside the box and you taking the time to step forward and face these other two, which you're not doing. This is, this is important because sometimes, um, sometimes we, we feel like we need to just stay in the same state of being, um, and we stay holy and pure and innocent, um, but we're, we're allowing something else to kind of be louder in our life, um, and we're just waiting for the winds of change, you know, and um, we're waiting for the winds of change, and we can be patient and patient and patient, but Sometimes you have to be the wind of change. Sometimes the wind of change has to come from you. And so I'm telling her that it's time for her to be the wind of change for herself. When have you been patient enough in a human life, you know? She's uh, str struggling with this, and I see her start to become very brittle boned and uh, unable to have the strength to stand up. So she's also living in her own uh, self illusions, I guess, her own comfort zone, as beautiful as it is, is self imprisoning. She's just simply too weak to stand up. And I see that she tries and all her bones literally crack and break. And I mean, she just all, I can hear all of her, literally all of her bones snapping and breaking and cracking like toothpicks. And the rock is still here, but I don't feel the rock really is. The rock is to create safety for the Queen of England and this beautiful prom girl. Um... America, Miss America pageant <laughs> but this one um, I don't feel like it's actually for her it's just to hide her from those other two so they don't have to look at her acknowledge her kind of thing but remember she's also a part of them so they're refusing to look at a part of themselves this is so interesting and they're all connected Dark blue, red, and green. They're all connected. I will say they all look... Um, I mean, these two look really healthy in comparison to where we started. This one still looks healthier than when we started, but this is an issue here. Obviously an issue here. Okay. Okay, you're finally, um, you're releasing some emotions out of your gut region here and out of your throat, okay? So there's emotion that's just releasing out of the gut and I feel it um, releasing out of the throat too. And it feels, feels like it's old. It feels like that needed to be released a long time ago. It's like an old sadness. I'm going to try something. I'm going to define this this um, gentle one, okay? Um, because challenge, right? When we look at challenge, we're just going to transform anything that's blocking our way as Archangel Metatron. <laughs> so I'm going to see anything that's blocking her way as Archangel Metatron so she can find the strength to conquer herself, okay? So so I'm telling her anything that you, that the brittle bones, Archangel Metatron. This giant rock covering you, Archangel Metatron. These two, Archangel Metatron. Literally, it's all Archangel Metatron. So now that we know all this seemingly bad stuff is actually a very good thing, um, <laughs> now we can get through it, no problem. All the bad stuff is actually Archangel Metatron. It's a good thing. <laughs> so let's see. Hmm. She actually, um, her heart suddenly gets bright and she laughs um, at this too. And she starts to uh, glow an orange color. And she's glowing orange literally from the heart and from the throat, very noticeably. And uh, she's starting to become literally glowing um, spirit of orange. She really is. <laughs> so something, um, the next feeling I get is, uh, feels kind of sad and it's a lack of hugs and and warmth and affection, you know, just just like real hugs. It's a lack of that. 
And it's a lack of just allowing yourself to relax enough to hug yourself, but not that, um, to be hugged too. I mean, this is a lack of hugs of self and hugs from others, but it comes from allowing to the love to come in, allowing the love in to love yourself and to be loved by others, allowing the love in. So, so we see, you know, they say root is red and the sexual body sacral is orange and I never go by the color codes. I just go by what I see. Um, but there may be something here to the sexual body, the, you know, the intimacy, because, um, for instance, this is like a Freudian thing, you know, how many hugs did we get from mom and dad when we were younger? Like how many hugs did we, so it's, it's so kids version of intimacy is hugs and snuggles, you know, and I love you. That's their version of intimacy. So we, um, develop a relationship with intimacy in our teenage years and our adult years, um, based on how we were hugged and loved and treated when we were younger. This doesn't necessarily mean your parents didn't give you lots of love and hugs, um, but there's something here that comes from youth and um, it just, it needs more nourishment. That's simply what it's saying. It just simply says, I want more n nourishment. And as I say, it, it starts to turn yellow. And so yellow, they say, is the emotional gut. So hold on a second here. A lot of release from the throat. It's just a lot of release. Hmm. Okay. I tell her if that is enough for her. And Archangel Metatron is here, just so you know. <laughs> He's been here the whole time. <laughs> okay, so so this release is actually quite helpful for her. And um, she doesn't need uh, the encouragement anymore. She just simply needed to receive that within herself. And now receiving that within herself, it just feels very instinctive and natural for her to stand up and to actually embrace and nurture the other two. And the love and the nurture, she says, comes from herself. It comes from her. And when she's in balance, then the other two start to flow, um, flow together. And then it all flows. It all flows, she says. Um, and it comes from the love and the hugs. And, um, it comes from those, that, that intimacy energy, you know, nurture. Um, and it's warm and it's gentle and it's sweet and it's lovely. And she's just glowing really bright yellow right now. And uh, it's just so natural. I mean, she's just shining so bright. And uh, the other two are really relaxing substantially. And they don't need to put on these facades. They don't have to be the leader of you or the, um, I don't know, the most adored version of you. I don't know, the healer. I don't, I'm not sure what Miss America represents. But she is lovely. She's absolutely lovely. <laughs> she's lovely to look at. And she's totally healing for me. Um, but there's something that's just, just not fully together with her. Queen of England, she's in charge. She's got the ideas. But she's also, there's something not balanced about her. So this here is just sort of like the sexual body and the motions. Um, and it's just sort of bringing it all together, you know, green and red <laughs> and dark blue. It's funny how these chakra body transformations work. There's never a single one that's even remotely the same. So... <laughs> Okay, so I see just everybody starting to get more and more peaceful looking in your heart, by the way. This is all happening within your heart. And uh, I start to see the glowing. I mean, I start to see glowing happen here. And it's it feels like a lot of energy is just literally shining out of all your chakra bodies. And it's all sort of integrated into the heart which is the most supportive area. I love bringing the energy bodies into a supportive nook in the heart where they can all congregate, where they can all work together, where they're in the center of your own universe and all the balance and the flow is taking place from the heart and then above and below. Um, I, like, I really like that way the energy feels. 
and um, it's starting to happen. Um, all your energy bodies are glowing in their own locations, but they're all glowing from within your heart. So your heart is actually looks like a rainbow. It's really, really beautiful. It's super beautiful. And there's just um, lots of smiling and um, acceptance and forgiveness, not really necessary because we all just needed to come to an awareness of each other's needs. Um, and now that the awareness has taken place, there's no need for forgiveness or apologies or anything because we just needed to get to that point of awareness because all along we loved each other. We loved each other all along. So we just had to get back to that love again, you know, that's all it is. And we're learning in the process. Mm. boy you're you look great just so you know um your energy field has i mean literally everything that we've uh, come across all the duplicates and the zapping and the weird stuff all that has disappeared it's totally vanished because it's not necessary anymore um we've reconciled literally all the frequencies that were um saying that this is part of my existence this is part of my reality reality this this identifies me this defines me um, well, it doesn't anymore because we're bringing balance to all this other stuff. So, so it doesn't exist anymore. It does, simply doesn't exist. Hmm. I'm just going to just hang out for just another minute or two here. I do like to just put a little bit of energy in your earth star chakra and soul star chakra. It's just really nice. Um, I'm kind of surprised by, by how, um, I don't know, they're not like um, earth and soul star chakras aren't as... Um, vibrationally loud um as they should be <laughs> for a lot of people so i'm gonna just see how your earth star chakra looks right now i actually go to earth star chakra and i show earth star chakra literally everything going on in the heart right now is so exciting it's like a, a fireworks display of rainbow colors and earth star chakra i will say feels cold and distant <laughs> um feels uh like it's dried up and um, all of its light and spark has been used up um, is kind of what it's like. So I'm literally taking the orb of all this beautiful love and information and snuggles and hugs from the heart, from all your chakra bodies, and I'm just placing an orb, a duplicate, <laughs> but I'm just placing that memory, okay, um, into the earth star chakra beneath your feet so it can feel warm and connected and rejuvenated, okay? Because it needs to be activated again, so <laughs> it needs to be activated. Earth star chakra... I always see his female and uh, starting to, to cry, starting to feel tears, and it's beautiful tears. Um, it's starting to kind of like be surprised and processing like, wow, wow, really this is happening? Wow. Um, there's some weird uh, cord out energies that are trying to rise to the surface and come out. They look like burning fireballs actually trying to come up and out. And as that happens, your emotional gut feels it and your eyes are starting to cry here, actually, in the face region. Ah, I'm just stretching some energy out of you. Yeah, that's good. Hmm. Oh, wow, she's really deep right now. And uh, she's digesting this new um, awareness of love. And I tell her, I tell her, Star Chakra, I say, um, you're, you're valued, um, you're loved, you're part of this whole beautiful body, you're part of it, and you're needed, you're wanted, you're loved. Gosh, she's like a, an abandoned child, Earth Star Chakra is like an abandoned child. What you've been through must have been very hard on this part of you. Hmm. Oh, so I'm going to go. I'm just going to let that be. I'm going to go to Soul Star Chakra really quick. I don't know. There's lots of white ruffles in here. There's a man that's um, uh, making a bed, and uh, I don't know why he's fluffing these pillows and lots of dust comes off. He actually works with, like, um, gloves on, <laughs> um, like uh, rubber gloves. Um, he's wearing a white outfit. Um, he has glasses and a white mustache. He's bald, and he's dusting this off. 
it's a bedroom. It's a bed. It's a white bed in a white room. But it's a rounded space. And I'm starting to notice there's a purple energy starting to um, ignite in here. I'm starting to see it become more and more and more glowing purple. And I do like to see the crown and the soul star chakra working together. So um, it grew, glowing purple is really lovely. I see a master enter in here. And the master is both purple and dark blue. And is both representing male and female. And is walking towards the old man. And touches him on the shoulder. And uh, says, hello, do you remember me? <laughs> he, he just instantly turns to dust when he looks. And everything disappears. I mean, this masher is two beings in in one, and they almost they show me two like Siamese twins. One is is purple head, and the other has a dark blue head, and they're one share one body, but they're like cut straight down like the center one head, the other head, the straight down the center. One wears the dark blue outfit, and one wears the purple outfit, and they're waving, and I start to see this place now erupt in silver light. Um, and it becomes really bright in here and I actually lift it upward because it's too low. So I'm lifting up your soul star chakra so it's a lot higher. There's lots of silver confetti <laughs> and golden confetti. Earth star chakra is going up into the stars. I'm going to go back to earth star chakra and see how things are going. I'm going to bring um, root, which I often see as male. I'm going to have Root go in, in Earth Star Chakra so they can start working together. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's almost like um, like totally like open and uh, to receiving friendship and kinship and love and companionship. I mean, that's like a lot of the energy that's going through here open 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 to receiving love and there's ignited light that just starts to like get get really excited and uh, i see earth star shocker just like a like a professional baseball player like throwing it like straight down 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 down, down. i'm going really deep into the earth energies and you start to feel super expanded you start to feel like you're open to <laughs> so much more Super airy and breathable, a lot more energetically flexible in here. Super, super humongous improvement. Okay, that's all I can share. <laughs> Amazing. Wow, cool. Thank you so much. This was a very unique session experience. Um, thank you for sharing. Um, my, my style can be a little strange. Um, but I can see how everything always comes together at the end blows my mind how I get guided through these things. <sighs> Thank you so much for sharing. I, it re really means a lot to me, and I know it means a lot to people who watch this sessions. Um, and for those of you watching, if, if any of you would like to explore a session with me, please visit me at my website at abbynormalswisdomquest.com. I hope you all have a great day.